Today, I want to get into a little bit of coverage around where crypto is going when it comes to loans. Now, if you guys have been following the channel, you've probably seen people like Michael Saylor talk about this very subject and how crypto loans could be the future of how you're going to get access to cash without selling your crypto. We're going to dive in deep. My name is Paul Barron, and welcome back to TechPath. Today, joining me is Ilya Volkov, who is a CEO and one of the founders over at a company called You Holdler. Uh, great to have you on the show, Ilya. Yeah, hi, Paul. Happy to be here. Excellent. All right. So let's, for our, our viewers, and this is more for our international viewers, but for our American viewers, the key here is, is that this, I think, will give you guys some understanding about platforms that are uh, really kind of have unique offerings around crypto loans and yields and all that kind of stuff. Ilya, tell me a little bit about uh, you, Holdler. Where are you guys based? Where do you serve right now in terms of your, uh, your products? Yeah, so uh, we have started back in 2017 with the first onboarded customer in uh, 2018 with uh, just one single product. It was just a crypto back lending solution. So currently we have uh, set, um, some, some good set of different um, crypto to fiat uh, products. So on one hand, we still have crypto back lending solutions. On the other hand, we have crypto interest accounts. And in the middle, we have uh, different trading solutions from pure crypto to fiat and crypto to crypto exchange to some complex trading solutions. Mm -hmm. So uh, we still have our major focus on Europe. We have two entities, one in Switzerland, uh, and actually we have our headquarters in Switzerland currently, and another one in Cyprus, so uh, within the European Union. So. Yep. I like a little a little bit of understanding, you know, because your your product services are quite different than say someone like a Celsius. Let's go through some of the key products that you guys offer to the crypto community. What's your number one uh, program that you make available to crypto users? Yeah, so uh, we still uh, focus on crypto back lending solutions. So we have uh, crypto back uh, loan products. Um, so uh, speaking about differences with other companies uh, within the space, so we have much better conditions in terms of uh, loan to value. So we can offer up to 90% loan to value ratio. So, and uh, we have all major blockchains integrated as well as uh, we have all major fiat payments, uh, payment solutions integrated. Uh, that means that our customers can easily access to a different kind of bank wires, uh, SEPA within Europe, SWIFT globally. Uh, we have um, different card solutions for crypto deposits and crypto withdrawals, uh, fiat deposits and fiat withdrawals. Right. So, uh, yeah, and speaking about crypto back lending, so, uh, traditionally, uh, we, we, we have just basic product uh, with different tariff plans, with different LTVs. Uh, but actually, uh, we have built uh, some uh, complex products uh, on top of, uh, um, of crypto back lending solutions. Like, you know, we have noticed that many of our customers use uh, crypto back loans not just for getting you know cash to pay their regular bills but they're also using loans in order in order to buy more cryptos so mm -hmm. that's why we, we have built a couple of additional products called uh turbo charge or turbo loans and and multi hodl so uh, and basically the idea here is quite simple we help our customers to get more crypto using borrowed funds so, so talk to me a little bit about the 90% because we've, we've talked to uh, several people on our show before around crypto lending. And I think this strategy is, is one that, you know, all crypto, you know, members, if you own Bitcoin or any, any type of crypto that's, you know, in the top, we'll call it in the, you know, the premium asset classes that are available. A lot of people are utilizing these loans. I've had a chance to use it on Celsius. But the big difference with yours is that you can really dive into the leverage position much deeper. Is that safe for me to go that with a volatile product like, say, a Bitcoin or Ethereum? Yeah, it's safe and, and it's flexible, actually. So first of all, um, speaking about flexibility, you can manage your LTV ratio at any time. So you can, uh, if crypto is growing, uh, you can get more cash out of the same collateral. Uh, mm -hmm. If uh, crypto is going down, you can add more collateral and then push your LTV level down. So uh, LTV and, and margin call levels. So it's flexible and you can, you can manage it online. Um, 
uh, and actually it's something easy to do. So the second point uh, is um, is about uh, the general idea behind this, you know, LTV versus margin call or, or uh, price down limit level, right. because in case uh, in case uh, crypto drops below the the margin call level. Of course, we have to liquidate uh, the position. Uh, that means that w we will cover our um, uh, positions. Uh, but the good point for customer is that there is no need to repay the loan. That means that uh, you, as, as customer, you already have enough cash to buy crypto even uh, uh, cheaper uh, because there is no, no need to repay. Um, let's say. Uh, if you use 90% LTV and crypto mm -hmm. drops more than 10%, uh, you only have uh, uh, enough amount to buy exactly the same amount of crypto you used initially as, as collateral. So, so are uh, you liquidating it, the entire position or do you liquidate only to the threshold where, where it reaches the 90% uh, again? We, we, we have to liquidate the entire position. Uh, but uh, it's 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 limited by by the amount loan, so we do not touch any other coins, any other balances on customer accounts. Mm -hmm. I know that some of our uh, competitors um, uh, mixing, you know, different funds from from different uh, products, right. uh, and uh, some of them use uh, even funds from wallets. So we don't mm -hmm. do that. Uh, and uh, actually, everything is very transparent. Everything is very simple. Uh, let's say if you get, let's say, 1K uh, loan from us using some, some of your Bitcoins, and at the same time, you still have other coins uh, at your balance, at your wallet, we don't get that, 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 that funds. Uh, we manage everything within your, within your uh, initial position. Ilya, talk to me a little bit about, okay, so with the amount of users that are utilizing Uhodler and kind of the whole ecosystem that seems to be developing around crypto-based loans, what does it look like in terms of the market for you guys? Do you see a lot more people stretching their loans out to 90%? We've, we've talked about this on the show before that leverage seems to be lifting a little bit. We are seeing more people utilize leverage. What does it look like in the activity within your own your own organization and your customers? Yeah, of course. So newbies, newbies are coming every day. So market is growing, more and more people coming to the market. And uh, again, we, we see two cases for crypto-backed loans. So the first one is quite simple. Uh, people are using our services just simply to, to, to avoid selling their favorite investment. Mm -hmm. uh, and... and uh, uh, they're using it in order to get cash to pay their regular bills. So it's a uh, first and classic traditional use case. But uh, second use case, which is quite popular, is that uh, people are using loans in order to buy to, in order to use leverage. So, uh, and, um, you know, it's some kind of an evolution. So uh, first touch with the customer usually is about the, the, this classic, you know, classic uh, use case. Uh, but uh, after uh, first or second, you know, touch with our products, uh, customers becoming more uh, engaged, more professional, and that's why they're trying to, you know, dig deep into the second use case. So because crypto is, is you know, it's really something interesting. It's really one of the most engaging, you know, uh, um, uh, I would say even games, like, uh, right? So like money is the best game in the world. But crypto money is the, you know, even more engaging and more more interesting game. So yeah, the game on people the game. I li like yeah, people like playing crypto. So yeah, I like it. I, I want to get into some of the features, you guys. So we've talked about the increasing of the loan uh, to value ratio, uh, managed loan duration. What are typical loan durations mm -hmm. that you have currently today? Can you go one month or twelve months? What's what's some of the loan durations I can operate with? Yeah, actually, it's a very, very good question. So uh, we have uh, several tariff plans uh, from uh, 30 days, uh, in some cases even less, to half a year. So okay. and we have tested different di di different plans. So we have tested even one year plan and even more. But reality is that that average loan duration is about days. And uh, uh, I think this is because of high volatility. Uh, and uh, this is because because uh, our market is very, very active. So 
Right. Uh, so, yeah, again, we, we have different plans, uh, but uh, on average, it's about 30 days. And uh, again, it's flexible. So you can use uh, different um, extensions. You can, you can actually, you can repay it at any time, as well as you can extend your loan plan. You can reopen your loan. So mm -hmm. if you don't like an idea to close it or to repay it, you can simply extend it for another period. On the manage, uh, or I should say the set take profit price, how does that work mm -hmm. within your platform? Explain that to me. Very good question. So, um, um, again, uh, people don't like an idea to sell their favorite investment, but they're waiting for some, some uh, price levels where they'd mm -hmm. like to fix their profits. So that's why we have implemented this uh, take profit feature. Like uh, if you have your uh, uh, crypto as collateral, and if you see that uh, the value of the, 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 that crypto is growing, you can set some, some price level where it will be more than enough uh, to cover your loan if we sell uh, your, your cryptos uh, and um, uh, to cover your loan some profits. Let, let's say uh, your, 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 the value of your crypto goes like uh, uh, two times higher in terms of you know pricing. That means right. that you can easily repay your loan and get uh, fifty percent, at least fifty percent, as a profit. So, sure. uh, yeah, and basically everything, every feature we have built, we have built based on on, on real customer demand. So we have noticed um, that many of our customers are trying to you know close their loans and sell their cryptos at some certain level of, of prices so mm -hmm. uh like plus plus 50 percent 100 percent plus 200 percent and, and we simply automated this feature so uh and uh, that works i like that feature in the sense of being able one the flexibility of it because that's that's one of the things i continue to see at least in the loan crypto space where we're seeing a lot of those backfills and how that affects someone's you know strategy on being able to take profits mm -hmm. when you look at uh extending price limits downward how can i do that let's say i've got a hundred thousand dollars in bitcoin and I'm, I'm at my 90%, what would be the strategy I would utilize to extend my price downward? Yeah, so um, if you see that, that uh, the value goes down and if you'd like to sleep well, you can simply add more collateral. So you can, you can uh, do that manually or you can follow our uh, notifications. So um, uh, we are always sending notifications about ch changes uh, uh, with the value of your collateral. Mm -hmm. So um, actually, it's something easy to do. So uh, you get notification and decide to, to add your collateral or repay your loan or to use a close now feature. Uh, speaking about close now, Mm, upon clicking the button, we automatically sell the collateral, and you receive you know the rest uh, back into your account. So, again, ev everything is very uh, transparent, and everything is very very you know simple. The okay, so crypto loans definitely a large part of your business. The other is high yield um, positions. You know, a lot of people whether you're holding a stable coin or maybe you're doing something with Bitcoin or others. I was looking at your list mm -hmm. in terms of the savings account interest. You have USDT at 12.3%, PAX at 12, DAI also, HUSD, um, URS 12, all those great. And then even USDC at 12%. Are you seeing, and I like the 10% on, on, uh, on BUSD, which is good. Have, have you seen a lot of push though in the actual tokens to get higher yield percentages than where you guys are going with this. Is there any plan on shifting those? Because we have seen a couple of platforms starting to move their percentage on yields on some of the core uh, cryptocurrency assets. Yeah, of course, we, we, we of course, we, we, we have to be, you know, stable and profitable. So, uh, of course, we cannot, you know, promise that we will have the, these rates for forever. So, yeah. but as of now, uh, it's already like a second year. We, we, we just keep the same levels uh, of interest for every single coin, except maybe some, some minor, um, um, minor exceptions. So, um, 
in general, uh, I see that we, we are able to, to keep it for, um, for some long period of time, just because we are profitable, we are stable. So, but again, we cannot commit before be for forever. So, uh, as for new coins, um, we're going to add uh, a few more coins weeks, and I think uh, we'll be able to to offer the same, you know, excellent uh, um, level of, of um, uh, yield for for new new coins as well. Have you seen any? Any trends within your own customer base shifting on, and this is more on the stablecoin side, kind of curious, trends going toward Tether or going to USDC? Have you seen any it's a shifts very, there? Very good, yeah, it's a very, very good question. So uh, slowly but surely, uh, the, the share of USDT is going down and the share of USDC is going up. I think it's only because of you know trust, only because of you know transparency, and uh, so just something obvious, I guess. So, but the interesting point is that uh, starting from last year, uh, we've got uh, some nice uplift with stable coins like like Paxos Gold, Pax G, right. uh, mm -hmm. because it's connected to gold, and we see that many of our customers started to use Pax G instead of other. Coins coins connected to dollar, Interesting. which is good, I think. Yeah. So I like, and, and I think when you look at uh, exchanges like you and, and your platform, what you're getting in a lot of cases are very sophisticated traders and people in the crypto space that are very aware of some of the project, you know, programs that are available, whether it's yield, whether you're looking at you know, loan to value ratios that are higher, those kind of scenarios. What about the exchange side of your business? Have you seen a big uptick there. Obviously, there's a lot, you know, of exchanges available. We are seeing people move away from Binance a little bit, uh, just in our own data that we've started to study. Where do you see the exchange business going? Do you feel like companies like you have to have these other products available to really make a difference out there? Uh, yeah, actually, exchange for us is not a key business. So it's some kind of uh, a supporting supporting service to make. Mm -hmm the life of our users easier um so but uh, even you know having uh, exchange as, as a uh, additional supporting business we we see some good growth here uh just actually because you know everyone needs some kind of a one-stop shop right so we, uh, it's not really convenient to to surf between different products different websites different applications so it's really nice to to have uh, you know, all services all in one, in one application. And that's why we have uh, exchange, crypto backed loans, uh, trading solutions, uh, everything in one application. So, and actually we are able to offer, uh, I would say the same level of quality comparing to big exchanges uh, with uh, only one major difference. So uh, our exchange is built for just normal people, not for crypto geeks. Right, mm -hmm. so that's why we don't have a lot of you know complicated features with different signals, uh, uh, order books, and and uh, uh, all that stuff. So we are targeting uh, and serving just just normal people, middle class, upper middle class, uh, with no complications. So, uh, so uh, and it, yeah. I like the simple features because that, that is one thing that uh, does draw in new users and we are starting, to, that's why Coinbase has been so popular, kind of the transitory platform, I think, for a lot of people worldwide and whether you go into Coinbase for the first time and then eventually graduate over to Coinbase Pro, even Coinbase Pro has a lot of that much more complex look and, and not as many features around that, So, I, but we are seeing what seems to be somewhat of a global trend around the exchanges and the platforms, especially in the loan, crypto loan ba backed business of these much more user friendly, mobile friendly uh, platforms that have just really kind of embraced a lot of users, which I think, you know, if you think about it, when you look at just the size of the market space as it is right now, very small, very small, and the potential for, especially during this next maybe six months, we could see another, maybe as many as a hundred million people come into the market for sure. In in terms of just that FOMO, 
into the market because of what we're, we're about to see in terms of crypto movement. Let's talk about some of the projects and tokens. I know you guys just took on a Cardano uh, ADA um, onto the platform to where you can exchange it. How many cryptos can I utilize on your platform as loan-based uh, you know, collateral? Yeah, actually, actually, we have all major blockchains uh, integrated into the platform, uh, and we have all major coins and tokens already integrated into the into into the platform. So, okay. and actually, our strategy is quite simple. We're just simply following uh, our customers' demand. So, mm -hmm. um, so uh, if we see some demand from 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 the market, uh, we're doing our own due diligence on, on um, the proposed coins and tokens, and we're simply integrating them. So uh, as of now, all majors are already integrated. Mm -hmm. So right now, if I want to go in with Cardano and do a loan, I could do that with, with you, Hodler, yep, today? Of course. Okay, of course. so cool. Yep, of course. In terms of, especially with Cardano, on a what seems to be a tear right now in terms of growth and obviously we're waiting for September 12th of what's going to happen with obviously the hard fork there and kind of the evolution of, of uh, Alonzo moving into the next direction. Ilya, let me talk to you a little bit about fees because this is a scenario that we have mm -hmm. seen this uh, a little bit of pushback from the BlockFi customer base, uh, a little higher fees. Obviously, we know what Celsius is doing. We've had Alex on the show here. We see uh, Steve over at Voyager who's trying to get into the crypto-based loans. But it seems like the fee side of things are going to be a factor here. And let's talk about a scenario here. If I'm, if I'm trading and I've got a, a loan on Uhodler today, it's a $100,000 Bitcoin loan. I'm, I'm, I'm loaned out at the 90% LTV. Mm -hmm. And I go ahead and I liquidate that. I pay that loan back. How quickly can I move assets either over to USDC and or move them off the platform almost instantly so actually what are my as fees for in transferring uh, let's so say i just want to move for, over to usdc so uh don't remember exactly so it depends on on the uh, gas fee for usdc and other uh erc20 tokens so uh we have a flat fee i don't remember exactly so currently we have just a few few dollars uh flat commission so okay. Uh, yeah, and uh, as for execution time, it's just almost instant. Uh, of course, it depends on the load on blockchain. Um, right. Usually, there, there are no any delays on our side. It's just just kind of dependent on on the speed Projection of blockchain. On the so, yeah. if you, yeah, yeah, if you use Bitcoin, it's a bit you know slower. If you use uh, Ethereum network, it's of course faster. If you use Ripple or uh, Stellar or some other. Um, Efficient blockchains, again, it's almost instant. So no any is there any, delays. Is there any plan, because we are seeing a, a somewhat of a shift in, in many of these platforms to kind of go to that secondary banking model where, you know, because typically today, if I've got money in crypto and I do want to put it into USDC, maybe I need a debit card or a credit card that's attached to that account so I can utilize it, maybe even some light uh, bill pay, those kind of things. Any mm -hmm. plans for your product to go in that direction? Yeah, of course. So uh, we already have all major fiat payment solutions integrated. So that means that you can easily deposit and withdraw uh, your euros or dollars or some other currencies uh, by bank, bank wires. So we have some card solutions, third-party solutions integrated into the platform. So it works uh, in all directions. And of course, we have plans in regards to our own uh, card but there are still some things to do in order to implement uh, this product. Right. But uh, again, speaking about you know uh, customer um, experience, uh, uh, you know it's just the same. We, we don't have you hodler card yet, but you can use your own card. So and then mm. you can simply use your card to 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 transfer funds to your hodler account or to withdraw from you hodler to your card. So. Right, um, back to your bank account. What is the, yeah. is there any transfers fees if I am moving it back to my traditional bank account? Uh, as for bank wires, they're cheap and efficient. Uh, as for SEPA wires within Europe, it's just a few 
uh, again, I don't remember exactly, just two euros, up to five euros flat fee, something like that for 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 European wires, and uh, they're uh, very efficient, so you can get your um, you know, funds within uh, business day. So mm-hmm. if you speak about SWIFT, uh, international transfers, they're a bit more expensive, uh, up to $50. Uh, and it usually takes around 24 hours for a SWIFT okay. uh, transaction. So, yeah, as for uh, credit card, debit card transfers, they're not so efficient in terms of pricing. So it's mm-hmm. it, it's a bit more expensive. And again, uh, because we are now dependent on third party uh, service providers. Uh, but of course, it's more efficient in terms of, you know, execution timing. So it's, again, it's right. almost instant. So for our users, and, and just let's use Bitcoin as an example, uh, percentage I'm going to pay on that loan if I were to go up to a 90% LTV? Uh, you mean, uh, what is the fee? You mean for, the, lo- yeah, for, the loan fee, uh, yeah. The loan fee. Yeah, so, yeah, uh, again, we have different tariff plans, uh, but on average, it would be something about 1%. So, I'm sorry, did you say 1%? One percent. Okay. All right. Well, that's definitely one of the yeah. lowest I've heard of. And okay, so but of course it's dependent on tariff plan. So it could be it could sure. be one month. Sure. It could be half a year. Depending on yeah, right, and, uh, depending on your length. Yeah, and you know, very important point. Speaking about pricing for loans, is that uh, typical mistake uh, uh, is uh, in comparing of asking for crypto back loans with with the pricing for traditional loans. Because mm-hmm. if we speak about traditional loans, uh, we, 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 we speak about some kind of a stable conservative market. If we speak about crypto-backed loans, we speak about highly efficient, highly volatile market. That means right. that uh, probably you could pay 1% as a fee for loan, but uh, just within 24 hours, you could get like plus 15% sure. profit just because of high volatility. So right. it's just a bit no, different I definitely- logic. Yeah, and I, I think a lot of traders have started to understand kind of the flexibility. And and listen, volatility is how a lot of, whether you're swing trading or you're doing bot trading, yeah. any of those kind of things that really have a lot of uh, potentials there. And, and now we're starting to see a lot more in the leverage trading side of things, which we've seen uh, more activity from the retail consumer, retail investor here in the past 60 days, a lot more entry points, a lot more activity in, in many of these platforms going this direction. Yeah. Do you see that as a long-term play over the next many years as we see kind of this, I don't know that we're going to see the same bear market that we've seen in the past in 2017 and 13. What are your thoughts on that? Do you, do you feel like we'll see the same bear market or do you think we'll see a little different kind of makeup of how that market's going to look? I think I think we'll see different uh, different uh, options uh, for sure. We'll see much more crypto winters and much more crypto summer summers. So bear and bull markets both, uh, because you know volatility is something like a hard beat. If your heart is continue continues beating, you're alive. So the same for financial markets. Volatility is a you know is a key to 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 to, to the market. So. Uh, but in general, I think crypto will stay with us for uh, for a long period of time, maybe forever. Oh, for sure. Because yeah. I, yeah, because I don't see crypto like a like like a revolution. So in my mind, it's just a logical uh, evolutionary step in the development of financial market. So that means that we just got uh, one more feature, one more type of asset, one more payment solution, one more. Uh, one more something to to financial market, and uh, uh, the only question is of uh, as of now is how efficiently uh, this new crypto products will be integrated into traditional financial market. So I think that that uh, it will be integrated for sure, and we're doing our best to integrate everybody. So, so and that means that uh, doesn't matter uh, crypto winter, crypto summer, we already have right. this feature. It will be with us for, you know, forever. <laughs> for some of our uh, viewers, just a quick rundown um, here on screen. We've got the ninety day or the ninety percent, fifteen day. This is the one percent. I think you're referring to Ilya. Yep. Ilya, yep. and then then the thirty day. You jump up to two and a half, sixty one days at three point two, and fifty percent. And of course, it does go down 
in terms of the percentage availability into loan to value ratio, uh, which goes up to 8% if you're going out above yeah. the 180. Yeah. So which are, these seem to be very, very uh, competitive in the, in the market space right now. In terms of, you know, because that's been the big advantage of crypto-based loans, no application, mm -hmm. no credit check, you've got coll collateral that's liquid in your account. Uh, the flexibility and the quickness of these transfers, how quickly would I be able to have those loans available if I were to, say, choose this 90% 15-day loan and I wanted to do this? Within within seconds, within seconds. So if you have your, yeah, yeah, immediately, yeah. Of course, of course, uh, before opening your account, of course, you have to pass through KYC, IML sure. procedures. So because we, we are fully compliant with all uh, regulations. So, uh, but again, we're trying to, to build the most, um, you know, convenient user experience. And uh, it's something easy to scan and upload your ID, make a selfie, you know. So, but yeah. uh, as soon as you are onboarded, as soon as you have your account activated, it's just you know, instant. Yeah, sure. Ilya, last question, and that is all, always about security and also mm -hmm. is my crypto and are my USDCs safe in Uhodler? Talk to me about what you guys have in terms of safety net, uh, regulatory, you know, satisfaction there within uh, Switzerland. Talk to me about where you've got to kind of secured the opportunity for me to put money in there. Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, we have our own system uh, uh, built by our engineers as a core, but on top of that, we have uh, several additional layers of security. So, for example, okay. we have Ledger Vault integrated, uh, and we are very happy to uh, partner with Ledger Vault. So, uh, within our contract uh, with Ledger Vault, we have uh, uh, insurance uh, for up to 150 million provided by uh, some top level insurance companies in Europe and uh, in the UK. So also we have Fireblocks integrated recently. So mm -hmm. with Fireblocks, we, we have an additional layer of security because we have implemented additional uh, governance rules with um, some security features. So uh, uh, again, speaking about uh, security, we have uh, different um, uh, security partners who are running uh, uh, independent pen tests on a regular basis. Uh, on average, every quarter we have different hackers who are trying to hack us in order to, you know, check and improve stability and, and um, uh, security. So, uh, and uh, so basically, you know, we have some complex system. We do not store all funds in one single place. So we have right. different uh, custodies, uh, including partners like Ledger World uh, and then the Fireblocks. And um, yeah, we use industry best practices for, for uh, security. So of course, we're not a bank yet. Uh, that's why yeah. we cannot uh, uh, tell about, about you know protection for deposits uh, because we're right. not a bank yet. But maybe in the future, we will add this feature as well. <laughs> yeah, well, I think a lot of people are going into that, obviously, for mainstream adoption within you know the retail investment community. Those are the kind of security measurements that would obviously be huge in terms of people yep. you know really trusting uh, to kind of go in that direction for sure. Since you are in Europe, you you are most of your customers based in Europe, European Union. Talk to me about the growth capacity there in those markets. Do you feel like this is really just getting started in Europe right now in terms of adoption, or where do you feel the market is setting? Uh, yeah, I think it's just the, the the early stage for the market. So uh, I think the capacity is much much more than than we, we see now. So mm -hmm. uh, again. Newbies are coming every day, but right. uh, we still at the level of, I would say below below ten percent in terms of um, the uh, real capacity of the market. So yeah, for sure. Uh, and uh, uh, just just to give an idea, so in Europe, uh, many people uh, like Revolut uh, for just traditional right. banking solution to, to pay regular mm -hmm. bills. So if you check the number of customers, Revolut customers, you will see that. Uh, there is still a huge potential for crypto native banks and uh, crypto companies because you now finally we will all need uh, one single application 
with uh, your fiat funds connected to your card and your crypto cards connected to, to the same account. So uh, right. Revolut is still not a crypto native. They have added crypto services recently, but they still fiat native, right? So, mm -hmm. but very soon, I think we'll see some good examples of crypto native banking with crypto and fiat working together. Yeah. Yeah, I think we've we've had a, a handful of, of banks that we've reviewed here on the show that are starting to move in this direction, but mostly like you're referencing is their legacy banks that are just adding it in, you know, much like Revolut yeah. there in Europe, uh, which we've had some, you know, discussion about that as well. We should probably get them on the show to, just to talk about some of the traditional banks that have kind of moved in this direction yeah. very heavily. When you look at that happening and the likelihood, do you feel like that's going to happen this round or do you feel like we'll start to see those kind of integrations more like 22 and 23? Actually, it's already happening. Uh, look at the hodler, for example. So basically, we already have all needed services all in one. So we have right. all major blockchains uh, integrated. We have all major fiat payment systems. We have interest accounts. We have crypto backlending solutions. So uh, everything is already, already you know, here but it's not uh, uh very convenient at the moment we still need to work more in order to implement you know more convenient solutions like credit cards we just discussed so uh we still need to 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 you know add some more um uh, things in terms of regulation in terms of uh, you know paperwork with different kind of licenses uh so but again it's already happening so and again here in switzerland for example we already have uh two uh crypto banks two crypto native banks yep. right uh we already have them of course they uh also need to invest uh, additional efforts additional funds uh, in order to get more customers in order to you know bring their services at a new level but they're already here and we're already here so and again revolute uh they already implemented some crypto services so we just need to to you know combine all our efforts and we, we all need to work together in order to you know bring our market to the new level but we already have built a good basis for that i'm kind of curious and i, I keep saying this is going to be the last question but i was just looking at uh your website and noticed that you have an nft drop here and and you're able to loan against this right now how is yeah. What's the future of where you see non-fungibles being utilized as collateral and people doing uh, loans on these? Yeah, actually, excellent question. And uh, I really like this project. Um, so because of several reasons. So first of all, uh, speaking about this particular project, uh, together with our uh, mates from the Crypto Valley Association, we have um, uh, issued a token, which is uh, equal to the full commercial license for the song. So oh, because of okay. uh, smart regulation in Switzerland, it's legally possible uh, to issue a uh, full commercial license for IPs, for different kind of IPs, including you know uh, songs, uh, in the form of a token. So uh, traditionally speaking, it's just the same IP rights, same commercial license, but uh, issued in the form of the token which is really good uh, example of uh, smart regulation in Switzerland. And uh, mm -hmm. this is a really good example where we can speak not just about some senseless, you know, NFT tokens, but we can speak about real IPs structured in, in, in the very solid way. So it's the first reason. Second reason, speaking about this particular project, uh, it was uh, one of the first cases where we were able to tokenize uh, IPs for some rising pop star. So just imagine mm -hmm. if you would be able to buy Madonna IPs for her first songs back in 80s or early 90s. Yeah. It was not possible because of lack of technology. Yeah. So, but mm -hmm. now, now it's possible. So we've got uh, excellent ra rising star, very talented uh, girl with uh, excellent uh, songs and music. And we were able to tokenize her IPs for one of her early stage uh, uh, songs. So yeah. uh, this is just an excellent opportunity for all of us. So, and uh, the third reason is that actually NFTs is just another type of an asset, right? 
and as soon as it's an asset, it's easy to use this asset as collateral. So, um, so it, it it has some value, right? And that means that it's easy to uh, to provide some loans backed by by uh, these new new kind of uh, kind of assets. So NFT market is still at its early uh, stage of development, but uh, it's rapidly rapidly growing. So. Uh, even you know, a few months ago, back in February, it was some kind of an NFT hype with a lot of craziness and with a lot of mm -hmm. you know even senseless tokens. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but now, just just few months later, uh, we can see some some really valuable valuable projects with real IPs and with real art and not just art actually with, with the different yeah. kind of assets. So that's that's great. And uh, for speaking about our business, I see some huge potential. So, um, well, I think you yeah. know if you become one of the platforms that could enable this, maybe like in an open sea or rareable, you know, those kind of platforms where there's a lot of trading and, and activity going on, and any kind of you know potential you know partnership in that direction, especially around the NFT valuation side of things, because that's another a whole another world of things in terms of being able to leverage against it. So. Interesting stuff going on for sure. Ilya, it's been great having you on the show. Thank you so much for uh, stopping in today. We appreciate it. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Excellent. All right, so you guys are listening in over on the podcast right now. Make sure and, of course, give us some kudos over there. Thank you very much for the Spotify audience. Amazing growth over there. If you're right here on YouTube, best thing to do is, of course, like and share this out to someone that you know that is exploring blockchain technology and maybe technology in general, because that's what TechPath is about. We dive into a lot of the innovative forums that really are guiding our society today. Make sure if you want to reach out to us, hit me up on Twitter at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.